uh, how FDA works and, and saying that they were uh, working on FD4 at the time. And uh, he, he was uh, uh, talking about how uh, the weak signals could be copied, in, in, you know, by integration of the, over a period of time, and uh, and that, that they could be way down in the in the noise. Even you could uh, pick, pick the signals out of the noise. And he said a good CW operator can hear down to about minus 12 dBm. Uh, excuse me, about uh, 12 dB below the noise. I'm sorry. Good CW operator. That's right. ESP uh, uh, copying right there. But the FT8 can go down to uh, I don't know something like 20 dB below the uh, the noise. That's pretty good. Yeah, and he was saying uh, what well, actually both those guys uh, the two guys that uh, wrote it uh, based it and he was making that all of them but uh, I don't think he also said that this was supposed to be uh, meant to be used in the and it seems to be a regular mode now Oh yeah, FT4 Well, that's because FT4 is uh, asynchronous it's not uh, synchronized uh, FT8 is synchronized, you know, to a clock and uh, if you're not uh, if you're not close to being in synchronism with that clock, then you don't you don't hear them or don't work them. But uh, FT4 is asynchronous, so you know the, you're not beholden to a clock. You know, in my uh, professional career, there was a company up in Minnesota, a little small town that I actually know. I used to go uh, up there with my folks on vacation. A little bitty small town, maybe two thousand people. I uh, wrote some software that uh, is the same thing. It integrates over a long period of time, and they they were they were using it to read uh, read electric meters uh, over the power line. And they uh, you know used like a power line carrier, but then they they integrated the the, the signal over I don't know, several minutes, and they could uh, read meters at quite a distance. And uh, the, the only problem with that is. Uh, <laughs> If you got a lot of meters to read, it takes a long time to read them all. So uh, being in a small town, they could get away with that. But uh, being in bigger towns, it doesn't work necessarily. You know, where you have thousands of meters to read. But uh, they could zip way down below the noise level and pull that signal out. But of course, when you integrate over two or three minutes, or by, I think of the integration period on that case was like 15 minutes. 15 minutes a meter where they'd sit there and read, you know. You could read that stuff out of the noise. I'm, I'm kind of with you, Doug. I uh, kind of enjoy uh, chatting with people and uh, you know, hearing them come back and uh, and uh, finding out what equipment they're running and, and so on. By the way, you're sounding good back here. Uh, are you running a full kilowatt? Yeah, like channel 6. Well, I'm not quite channel 6 uh, power level, but... Hmm. I'm running uh, about 1,200 watts here and uh, with a JK antenna, about 65 feet. That's a K3 for the exciter. Uh, this is the expert 2K model. I count 7,300 uh, antenna 50 feet up. That's over the salt water. About 200 feet back. Oh, that'll work. Nothing between me, Europe, Africa, South America, Caribbean. How do you like that expert amp? I like it. 30, 37 watts, drives just uh, right to where I want it. I was up at uh, Xenia this year, or the Hambitchen, or whatever you want to call it, Dayton or whatever, and uh, saw the boys up there demonstrating their various, uh, various products, and... Uh, and uh, I, I, they, had, they had a 1.5. Uh, it was a 1.5 or 2K, what it was. Uh, but the big problem was they had to put swamping networks in them to uh, get around the FCC uh, uh, gain level. They 
had to drive them a little bit harder to get them up to power. I I don't like the other ones. If, if you get the ones the guys are uh, getting, uh, well, this one takes a bit. But if you, if you get the other ones, you less than five eight watts for up to full power. I I like this just the way I got. I got it hooked up from here. Right, right direct uh, from the back of the ring. Uh, this is the A lure hooked up to it. And uh, it automatically drops it down. I looked on the thing here. If I put this thing to low power, mid power, and high power, it's, uh, it's running about 7 watts to get uh, 6, 7 hundred. It runs about 12 watts to 1,500. And then it runs uh, about 30 seconds for full. Yeah, very good. You know, I, I, I'm still running this old... Uh, a tube amplifier. It's the old Kenwood uh, TL922 that I bought brand new back in 1982, I think. And uh, I've kept it and used it over the years, and it's been uh, pretty faithful. I've had, a, had to I've replaced the tubes twice in it, and uh, band switch I had to pl replace twice, and uh, all that's due to my own uh, my own folly. Then I. Uh, got rid of the light bulbs in there for the indicators. There were 8-volt bolt light bulbs that came out of Ch out of Japan. And I put LEDs in there. It's hard to find 8-volt light bulbs over in this part of the world. 922 was a nice thing. If I had one of those, we uh, modified that all up and that worked okay. Maybe it's fun to get the ventilator position thing working, but uh, <clears throat> by the time you tear that thing apart, Took all the crap off the bottom of those 3 500s and ran straight uh, wire right to it, and, uh, and that was a little bit better. But I'll tell you what, uh, it's very nice to have this thing like this. I know some guys don't like solid state, but uh, 22 pounds in a little box, I can pick it up. Pretty, uh, I like that, but it is nice. Yeah, that's very nice. Uh uh, of course, the, the 922 is pretty heavy because it's got that big transformer in it. It's not as big as some of the transformers, though, but still it's pretty heavy. And, uh, yes, I did the modification of this amplifier when I bought it brand new. I went to Kenwood, and they told me how to modify it for 10. It had the detent and the band switch so that I still had, uh, you know, the uh, the nine bands. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six bands on it. And... Uh, I run it on the work bands too, uh, on the 17 and 12, uh, uh, and uh, it seems to work okay. I don't have to, uh, 12 meters is a little bit uh, temperamental. I uh, didn't realize uh, back in the days when uh, W1AW was celebrating their 100th anniversary, I was uh, W1AW Portable Zero, and I was running them on 12 uh, in Europe, just going like crazy, and all of a sudden it looked like the band uh, dropped out. I uh, looked over, the amp wasn't, uh, there was no output on the amp. And uh, what I'd done, I'd burned up the, uh, the RF choke in the plate circuit there. It evidently is resonant around uh, 20, uh, 24 megahertz. And uh, you have to be uh, very aware of, you have to be very, very aware of that now. I've replaced the, the, the choke, but uh, uh, I, I don't really operate 12 that much. But uh, the other bands, it's okay. Seems to do all right. Loads well, and uh, there's a lot of uh, lot of range in the uh, impedance range in the pinet in there. That's what I like. It's uh, kind of like a, uh, a tuner in a box, you know. Over. Oh yeah. No, I'm still there. Not, not bad at all for a pair dash, uh, a three dash five hundred. That's what I'm doing. I'm working on my, uh, I want to convert everything over to solid state. And, uh, when I move, throw everything in a suitcase and, uh... Yeah, I probably need to be selling those tube amps uh, pretty quickly. I don't know how long that they'll have value. Is that you, uh, J.U.? Yeah, this is J.U. Of course, J.U. You start trying to speak anything. Uh, that's the lightning strike here, and uh, I lost the, um, 
Well, you're sounding okay here, uh, Dave. I, uh, I, my, my antenna is up uh, towards the northeast right now. You're not terribly strong, but uh, your audio sounds fine. Over. Yeah, I think you did a pretty good job. But it sounded okay. You sound like yourself, Dave. Well, we had rain, but nothing like that. We got two tenths of an inch last night, which uh, is not overwhelming. But uh, earlier this year, we were getting uh, rains that were uh, coming down at a rate of eight to ten inches an hour, and uh, it got three or four inches of rain in an hour. It, I understand what you're talking about. Uh, pretty soon you'll be growing gills down there. Yeah, very fine. Doug, are you copying uh, Dave down there in Florida? Uh, Dave, hello, Dave. Yeah, I'm copying you. This is AI4JU, Green Tech 12, Southwest Florida, right down the edge. Over. Yeah, many times. We've got a friend there. I've got a ham radio station. It's in all the But the, um, uh, what do you call the, uh, the electric pole on the other side of the street. He's lived there, he's been here three times. He was in about a month ago. But it's been okay in the house, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think I can hear you on just about anything other than six meters at the time, but, uh, and I know I usually catch you in there with my fucking Okay, and uh, you know uh, Bob takes one BBU? I know BBU, I know, but I can work all those guys locally here uh, on two meter side band or uh, anything else. But uh, yep, they're, uh, when I say up the street, we're all within a, a couple of hundred miles. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, uh, thank you for the help. Anyway. All right, you sounding okay here. <laughs> There's a big difference in him and a couple of the guys right up the street, but then look what he's using for hardware. Yeah, yeah. I worked uh, a TU, a K6TU in the uh, in the uh, NAQP contest here uh, the other day, of which I was surprised to hear on 20 with the beam stuck to the east. I was surprised to hear me off the back. in Hawaii when he's on usually 15, 17, 20, pretty, pretty good for the given 80 uh, sometimes when he's on, but uh, that's a time thing as so. well. But now he's, uh, yeah, he's on vacation right now. He's looking to get out of Hawaii, you know that, right? Uh, he didn't say that I can, uh, I can kind of understand that. That's back with you, get with me. You can get too much of paradise. Well, K6 
KE5EE uh, escaped, you know. You got to try it. Oh no! Have you ever worked that time friendly with an enormous antenna array for two hundred foot tower? Well, there are guys around. There are guys around that have put money into the station. Uh, you know, you, you think of the big names like uh, like uh, 3LPL and uh, 3LR and those guys. But uh, one guy out here in this part of the world has got uh, just a, a whole bunch of 200-foot uh, towers on his property is uh, N0NI. And, I. and uh, he just likes to put towers up and, and build. He doesn't really operate that much. That sounds really interesting. The only time I've ever went big anywhere, that was on the uh, 440 and two meters, so an enormous array. Yeah, but uh, uh, Zero NI Tony has, uh, the last count I think there were 17 towers on his, uh, in his little 10 acre lot there. He had 17 towers, he may have 19 or 20 now, I don't know, but they're all at 198 feet. Oh my goodness! Uh, uh, you think he the Oh yeah, he knows how to do that. Uh, he's he's kind of that's kind of his business. But uh, I was talking to him up at Dayton one time after they had an ice storm up there, and uh, I asked him how he fared, and he said, "Well, he lost uh, the 40 meter tower. 40 meter tower when the guy wire snapped. Had a had a, a three element 40 meter beam on there. Oh my goodness!" <laughs> Well, you know, I remember I was up in uh, New Jersey, I just fell there, I had a face to ray on two meters and four foot in. It was a terrible windstorm when I went out there, and the tower was actually twisted. So I managed to carry, made a uh, lasso out of a bit of um, uh, dashboard, and actually one of the yardies was stopping. <laughs> and I faced the tower, otherwise a lot would have come down over. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Mother Nature is pretty hard on antennas when she wants to be. Oh, yeah. Well, the wind doesn't grab hold of the hex beam anyway. That's from, well, yes and no. It does when it gets ice on it. Oh, if, yeah, you get ice on it. <laughs> but uh, if you read my one there, we had Hurricane Charlie down here. Well, that's the way you want it, isn't it? Yes. Uh, that was pretty bad there. And uh, I went up to uh, Ponacorda uh, for communication. And I always remember going up there to go to the block and uh, the I pulled up and 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 I the communication, he said, come right through, you're the second brick, over. Well, that's good. Well, Gary, I'm sorry I kept calling you, Doug. Uh, I don't know if I got that in my mind, but uh, nice to meet up with you again.